Good morning, traders and investors. My name is Roger Scott, and I'm the senior strategist for WealthPress. Today is Thursday. It's January 12th. It's 8, 11 in the morning. We've got the biggest report coming out. We've got the CPI coming out at 8.30. So I wanted to give you a little preview and hopefully get this to you right around the time it comes out. I'm also going to be doing a very special 10 a.m. VIP room. Um, usually I do it at, at, uh, at noon, but today I'm going to do it at 10 a.m. because I want to talk about the CPI report and how it's going to impact the economy. Right now, heading into it about 20 minutes before the 19 minutes before the report, the market is holding on pretty firm. But there's a few things I want to warn you about and show you that have been going on that you need to pay attention to. First of all, volatility looks like it's moving higher, not lower. That's not good for the market. Second of all, the bond market, the bond market looks like it's headed higher again, which means which means lower rates, but we'll see how, what happens after the report. Remember, higher higher bonds, lower rates, lower bonds, lower bonds, uh, lower lower bonds, higher rates, higher bonds, lower rates. So again, it's inverse of each other, but uh, I'm, I'm assuming that this will make a double top and I'm looking to sell it right around the 110 level. We still have a, white, a, a ways to go, we're at 106, but I'm waiting for it to get overbought before we're gonna sell it because I don't think the bond market is going to start moving higher. I don't think we're in a deflationary environment just yet. So keep your eye on the bond market and if it rallies back up to the, this is the ETF that I look at, the TLT ETF, I'm not looking at the futures. I'm looking for it to get right to the 109-ish level. That's where I would start looking to sell it. Now, a few things. This is the NASDAQ 100, and you're looking at a one-month chart. You see this? That's consolidation. This is one of the reasons why we can't get any trend following, uh, alpha rotation, anything to work, because things are just doing this. Nothing is moving one way or the other. So if you're an alpha rotation or any type of rotational system, and you've noticed that they haven't been doing anything, well, it's because of this. Look at the NASDAQ since December 15th. Today is January 12th. That's like a month. Look at this. Nothing. Nothing. You think it's just the NASDAQ? Look at the S&P 500. But finally, 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 it looks like it's breaking out to the upside. Now, I want you guys to be very, very careful, and let me explain to you why. This is the communication sector, and this is communication sector since September, since September, okay? And right now, notice it looks like it wants to break out too. But the problem is, look at how overbought it is right now. And if this sector is not gonna break out, this has been the most lagging sector in the economy. And if this sector doesn't break out and it doesn't look like it's going to because it's getting overbought and it doesn't look like it's out of trading range, it looks like we're going to fade. So to me, to me, based on what I'm seeing right now, don't be surprised if you see a breakout above these levels, a bunch of funds suckering in weak hands and us going down again, and I'll show you why. So if you could see, as long as you could see here, we're still trading below the 200-day moving average, and we're right at the 200-day moving average. Now, as long as this market stays bearish and as long as we have an inflationary environment, stocks are going to stay below the 200-day moving average. So what we're seeing right now is stocks getting to overbought levels. So don't be surprised if you see this or this looking like we're going to break out and then taking us down once again especially in light of the congestion and the consolidation that we're seeing in the consumer, um, in the communication sector. And why am I looking at the communication sector? I wanna show you why. Look at the stocks that are in here. Just so you see the kind of market cap we have. Meta, that's a FANG stock. Alphabet, that's a FANG stock. Netflix, that's a FANG stock. Verizon, T-Mobile. Now these are the large cap tech stocks. And if the large cap tech stocks are not ready to break out to the upside, and I don't think they are because we're overbought. I don't think the rest of the market is. So I'm very, very fearful that we're going to have a false breakout. Uh, the market's going to rally for a few days, much like it did, um, much like it did right here, much like it did right here, and then shake us back down and put us back into this downtrend. Because I don't think we're ready to go higher, and we are still squarely trading below the 200-day moving average. This to me looks like looks to me like a temporary shift in hopes that we're out of it. Uh, when 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 market participants realize that 2023 is not going to be that much better, I think they will let go of the pressure and we will see selling pressure come down here. So to me, this looks like a big shakeout ahead of another downside curve. 
I don't believe stocks are ready to go higher just yet. And one of the reasons why I don't think they're ready to go higher long term is number one, you still have a huge amount of vulnerability here. Number two, you're starting to see overbought levels once again here. For example, look at the index. We're back at 76 percentile. We're getting right back up here, but notice what happens when we get there every time. Whoops, sorry about that. We go up and then we back away and look at it over the last couple of years and, or look at it on a monthly. We, we're already back up here again. So I'm not seeing a major sustainable upside. If we were down here, I would say, guys, we can go up right now, but we're, we're already getting up there. And with the congestion and the consolidation and the fact that we've been just consolidating in, in the uh, large caps, I'm just not seeing it yet. Not yet, at least. Now let's talk about pre-market and talk about global economy. But I wanted to give you this update before the CPI report comes out so you guys don't get uh, any false sense of security about what's going on with this market because I need to see, uh, here's what I need to see. I wanna show you what I need to see. I need to see, I need to see the NASDAQ 100. I wanna see the 200 day higher than the 50 day. For all of these, I wanna see the 200 day higher than the 50 day, not the other way around. This is what I wanna see. I wanna see what I'm seeing on the energy sector where you have 43% below the, the 50 day and 74 above, not 40% above and 88 like you're seeing in the communication sector, which is why I'm saying the fundamental shift in the, in, in, in the communication sector still hasn't happened. You have 40% of stocks trading above the 200 day moving average. Meanwhile, it's, it's already at the upper range and we're overbought, which is what I showed you right here. So don't fall, don't fall for the banana in the tailpipe right now because it looks like it's ready to go higher, but it's not. And that's driving a lot of the market cap. It's got like four fang, sto fang stocks or three or four fang stocks. So be very, very, very careful right now. Let's talk a little bit about global economy. So market participants are a little bit too optimistic ahead of crucial US inflation report that could persuade the Federal Reserve to slow the pace of its interest rate hikes. They already are, they're going to 0.25. Uh, NASDAQ is now at a three and a half week high and I warned you guys be very, very careful because look at what the NASDAQ has been doing. This is the NASDAQ, look at what the NASDAQ has been doing. Does this look to you like a breakout, like a trending market? So the fact that it's at a three month high or a three and a half month high, when you have this type of vulnerability or 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 eighty percent versus sixty six percent. Look look at this. Let me show you. That's just not. I mean, look at where we're at right now. We're right back up here, and what happens when we go up here? We come down. So again, I'm just warning you and showing you what's going on right now. Uh, today, all eyes are focused on the CPI. I'm looking at the core. Uh, the core CPI is expected to come out at, I think, 6.5%. Yeah, S December CPI will stand at zero month over month, 6.5 year over year. Uh, let me go to look at the core. I want to look at the core because that's the real, real big number. And that's the only thing that I'm looking at, the core CPI and the jobless claims, actually. I forgot about the jobless claims. But the jobless claims, they've been making a big deal out of them, but they've been nothing. 5.7. This is what I'm what I'm looking at right here. I'm looking at the core CPI minus food and energy year over year. I'm looking at 5.7. So if the number is uh, above 5.7, it may influence the market one way if it's below, but that's what I'm looking for. Hopefully the number is below 5.7, not above, and then the market can say, yes, it is finally happening. Um, both the worst and the best day of the S&P 522 came in one on the day of the CPI report. So we gotta be very, very careful today. So it's inevitable that today's CPI has the ability to shape the next month. The latest release have seen two downside surprises on CPI in a row for the first time since the pandemic. So investors are hoping that we'll see another one today. 77.7% uh, that the Fed is gonna raise a quarter, 22% of a 0 0.50, that's the lowest we've seen in a long, long time. Uh, in addition, investors are likely to focus on a batch of speeches by the Fed. Oh boy, Harker, Bullard, Barkin, they're all gonna be talking today. Here's what I was looking at. U.S. core CPI data, 5.7. This is what you wanna watch. Previously, it was at six. So if it comes down at 5.7 or 5.6, that will be a gift, all right? China, 
China closed a little higher as a two-day rally in heavyweight tech stocks faded, which is what I'm kind of thinking is going to happen here. Regional tech stocks gained ground this week on Chinese government signaling less severe measures. Thursday CPI increased 1.8% year over year in line with expectations. In terms of market action, earnings are around the corner. Disney's coming out with some announcements today. Not earnings, but some announcements today ahead of earnings. Uh, KB Home uh, fell ahead of earnings. Logitech slipped 15% after earnings were crap. That's a tech stock. And Roku is down 4%. So things are not looking all that great. And we've got Taiwan Semiconductor reporting today, which will have a major influence on the VIX. Now, energies. Energies are abutting that 50-day moving average, and energies don't have that much correlation to the CPI. The CPI is more consumer data, although energies could have an impact. But I'm liking what I'm seeing in energies, and I believe energies are going to reach new highs. We may see a sector rotation in the type of energy stocks that are making all-time highs or new highs, so we'll have to re-evaluate that. But in terms of sectors, which we're looking at right now, things are looking good. Energy looks good. Industrial looks good. Basic material looks good. Financial looks good, which is surprising right now. Real estate is really picking up finally. Healthcare is kind of stalling out a little bit. Consumer staples are stalling out a little bit. Utilities, as I told you, utilities are going to come back, and they are. Uh, technology, don't hold your breath. I don't know if we're going to get above this level. Communication services, as I said, it's a channel right here, and we're overbought, and this is the highest level we've been in three months, and it looks like it goes up and down. Look at this, like this. See that? So I'm concerned that it's going to go to the downside right now. Very, 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 very important. Let's go back to the sectors. Where were we? All right. And consumer discretionary, I'm seeing the same thing. I'm seeing that it being that it's overbought. So I'm expecting cooling, a cooling pressure in technology, communication services, and consumer discretionary over the course of the next few days. Um, don't don't get don't react too fast to this report let the market open and remember i'm going to have a vip room today at 10 a.m so we can see what happens after the fact so we could we can uh we can we can do the follow-up to the game now the report's coming out in in about seven minutes and you'll be getting this video soon now before i let you go uh my top etf right now honestly industrial i like industrial right now uh and and if you were a betting man and if you were to look or or energy Energy or industrial, I'm good with. If I was to look at industrial options right now, I would be looking at the March. Yes, March already. It's only 64 days till expiration, not that much time. And uh, I would be looking around the 102, 101, 102, but I do like industrial stocks right now. Now, before we get to the CPI, before we I publish this video, if you've ever traded earnings, folks, odds are you've probably seen a few good days go south. It happens. Don't worry. It really is not your fault. This is a very, very difficult market. I was actually looking at an ETF system yesterday that worked for 22 years till this year. Now, even Wall Street legend Tom Busby is changing up how he trades earnings. Folks, we got we to gotta evolve, you know. Tom discovered a special window that opens up for just 72 hours after earnings announcement. He calls it the earnings drift. And, and, we are sitting down together at 1 p.m. Eastern time today, and I'll mention the CPI there too, to share all the details of this new strategy. You don't want to miss out. Today is Thursday. It's the 12th of January. Start your year on the right track. It's not too late. It's the perfect timing to start this year off. Follow the link below. Check out Earnings Drift, 1 p.m. Eastern Time. T-Buzz and I are going to get down and dirty. And make sure to watch this video, comment. I want to hear what you have to say because this report is going to be something. Talk to you soon. Reach out to me at support at marketgeeks.com. But if you're curious why alpha rotation and things have been re really choppy lately, it's because we haven't gone anywhere. Look, I mean, th this, is since, this is since September. On the, on the, on, this is half of the FANG stocks since September. We haven't gotten anywhere. All right, guys, I think I've given you enough info. If you have questions, support at marketgeeks.com or follow the link in the YouTube Wealth Press channel and put questions there. I will respond to each and every one of them. Bye. Have a great, great, great Thursday. I thought it was Tuesday for a minute. Bye.